Thank you, Suhel Mugabe. Now, the opposition today, like we have seen, launched their demand for free and fair elections. Question is, can the opposition in its current state win an election? Now, many opposition parties are struggling internally and have weak structures. On NTV Take 5 tonight, FDC Party President Major General Mujisha Muntu takes your questions. You remember, you can join the discussion on Facebook, Twitter, and SMS. Our hashtag is NTV Take 5. You can catch us on our Facebook page, NTV Uganda fan page. Also, our SMS number is 8778. Remember to begin with Take 5. Or you can send us an email on take5 at ntvuganda.co.ug. Welcome to NTV this evening. Thank you. Glad you could join us. Um, we you. have seen your call for reforms uh, in the coming elections. I guess the big question in everybody's minds this evening is, can the opposition present a united front? Are you capable of presenting a united front? Okay, I think we should look beyond the opposition. As opposition parties, we are simply a component of uh, a broader calling mm -hmm. or Ugandans. Mm -hmm. I think the beauty of today was that uh, we had uh, a platform on which there were political parties, uh, civil society organizations, prominent Ugandans themselves, and want to enlarge and expand that so that every interested Ugandan, anybody who wants to see a better future, is involved in this campaign. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it would be correct for the country to keep just looking at the opposition because uh, this country belongs to all of us. That's true. We want to, you know, to be equal before the law. Mm -hmm. We want to see uh, better opportunities for people who uh, want to put effort in whatever they want to do without being manipulated, we want to see a meritocracy uh, established. We want to see all good governance principles basically in short, to see them established. And there are people who are not even uh, partisan, people who are in different walks of life, they are people who are in business, they are professionals, they are people who are farmers. And uh, they just want to see a country that is functioning well. They don't care much for politics. They don't care yeah. so much for politics. Mm -hmm. And that's why we don't want to make parties seem as if they are the most critical component in this. Except we want to ensure that, uh, yes, we participate, but that there is a, a broad space mm -hmm. within which everybody who, everybody who is interested in seeing a better future participating. Okay, in a short while, I'm going to be asking you how um, everybody can participate in this cause. But for now, we have the opposition. You are, for lack of a better word, our mouthpiece uh, or our path to seeing a better Uganda. And I just wanted to air a few um, concerns from uh, some of our viewers on social media. I have someone here called Ario Coxley who says, uh, if Muntu wants to win through voting, he should first unite uh, Nandala to organize well FDC party and then with other opposition parties uh, to gain a brand saying for sure no political party can win uh, President Museveni when he still have power to appoint these high class officers. Uh, Muyomba Sami saying the elections will never be fair, it's just a waste of time. S uh, Semwezi Wampawa saying, and the opposition lack the force to hold itself in one piece. How can they win an election? And what we see is in house struggling. You know, the parties have in, um, weak structures and there's a lot of struggling. How, how are we going to move forward with all this? Besides this effort around uh, um, establishment of an environment uh, within which we can have free and fair elections uh, uh, conducted. Simultaneously, we have got to go and start building parties and strengthening them. Sure. Civil organizations also need to expand their influence because at the end of the day, we want to influence Ugandans to a certain direction to ensure that they first they take a stand to fight for their rights and freedoms. Mm -hmm. And to be able to do that, there must be vehicles through, that, through which that is done. Very true. And the moment we get involved in electoral politics, of course, then it means that the political parties themselves must be well organized. So the two are not in conflict. Mm -hmm. And we will be doing these things simultaneously. And when it comes to the fight for uh, 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 the necessary reforms, in the, uh, the conduct of free and fair elections, there we are together on the front that we created today. 
simultaneously and separately, we will be doing the other activities mm -hmm. of ensuring that we go within the parties themselves. We do whatever necessary forms are, uh, are required to be done in the parties to go down and build the uh, grassroots structures, to start putting in place uh, the people who would be interested to run on tickets of parties at different levels. So that also will have to be done. All right, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. that definitely becomes... Uh, um, remains uh, on the different uh, leaders of different parties. That's true. Now they'll be able to do that. Speaking of leaders of uh, different parties, one of the issues that was raised rather in the story that we aired last was, is there a possibility of having one political leader to stand against uh, President Museveni? Is there a possibility of having all the political parties uh, front one political leader? I hear a lot of people talking about that. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think that it would be too early to get involved in that. Because I don't think that it is so much having one leader. You may have one leader, all right. Mm -hmm. But if there is no organizational capability that, and, and, and strength that is put behind that leader, mm. you won't be able to get money. That's true. So I think we need to work on how to organize and build the capacity. And the situation really is in, the, in our favor, I believe. Mm. In the favor of the opposition, in the favor of those civil society organizations, in the favor of all Ugandans who want to see good governance in this country. Because if you look at statistics, about 70% or so of the population want to see change, including mm -hmm. those who are in the movement. That's true. So it's just a question of how we focus our energies and uh, um, efforts in how to organize and shift, cause that shift. Last election, uh, 2011, 42% of the population never voted. So you can imagine if we concentrate on that, including those who voted but uh, want change, including those who are in the movement, and we're able to organize them, and we focus that force against the establishment, we would certainly be able to take out the incumbent mm. and, uh, and the ruling party. So the question is our organizational capabilities mm. and how we'll be able to apply them in the current situation. All right, you say um, having one political leader, we're not ready for that. At some point, yes, we can evolve into that. Mm -hmm. But let's first ensure that we have got um, a critical mass of people mm -hmm. who are well organized, mm -hmm. whether in one party, whether in different parties, but that can come together in the case that we reach that point and we need to get one leader. Then we know that there is, a, yes, one leader, but there is enough strength, strength that yeah. we can put Back behind that leader. Any I ideas? Think it would be correct to get involved, to get involved. at this point. In yeah. Any ideas on how we can achieve that or how you can achieve that? As long as we remain focused on the common objectives right. that we want to have a better future. Mm -hmm then it means that we would subject whatever any other interest that we may have mm -hmm. at a critical point in time mm -hmm. if we find that that is what is necessary and then we can be able to do it. All right. Because at times you may reach a point and you find that maybe you need not have one. Mm -hmm. Maybe you find that uh, at, at a tactical level you may need uh, even more than one. It depends. So let's reach that point mm -hmm. and uh, make decisions depending on how the situation in the country will be. I've seen, many, I've seen a number of countries where actually you'll find that it would be, it would be to their advantage mm -hmm. to have more than one. Mm -hmm. At times it happens that way. Mm -hmm. But there are also times when you find that it's only one that would be needed. Sure. So let's make an assessment when we get there. Mm -hmm. As long as uh, what we'll be focused on is that, yes, if... That is what is necessary, whatever we find is necessary at that point, that we're all subject our interests to that for the good of the country. Mm. As we wind up, what do you hope to do differently as the opposition or as FDC, especially uh, with the elections in sight? Well, I also think that the country is uh, changed in, in, in different ways. Uh, I think there are more and more people who are getting uh, more and more frustrated. There are more and more people, including those who ordinarily used to support the ruling party, who really want to see change. That's true. Bump into so many who are saying, no, 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 enough is enough. Mm -hmm. So if we exploit that, certainly it should be possible for us to be able to change the situation. In a different way, I think we have got more advantages now than ever before. Uh, of course, there's also the question of uh, the demographics. Mm -hmm. More than 75% of this population now is of uh, uh, people below 35. And there are more and more people who are getting educated, who are getting out of universities and tertiary institutions. Many of them don't have jobs. So it's a question of how we communicate to them. It's a question of how we're able to build trust between ourselves and them. 
That's the most critical thing. I think once we are able to build trust for people to believe that, yes, these people know what the country requires, they know what they are doing, we can invest into them, they are worth investing into, I think we should be able to see, I think possibly an avalanche, mm -hmm. to see a radical shift from uh, uh, what has been in the past, where you have either people with the ruling party out of fear, mm. or out of uh, different interests, and the others who get frustrated and put out of the process. Right. So once we are able to tap into these two groups, I think we should be able to cause the necessary shift. That's mm -hmm. what we keep working on mm -hmm. without let up. All right. Well, thank you very much. I think we can both agree that a lot of work needs to be done. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Thank you so much for taking time to speak to us. You're welcome. All right. Pleasure is mine. All right. I've been talking to FDC leader, Major General Mujisha Muntu, taking your questions on NTV Tech 5.